small SUVs are the next big thing, and car makers are literally falling over themselves to get theirs to market. Nissan was first with the Duke, and we've got the Vauxhall Mokka that's just come out, and the Ford EcoSport is on the horizon. And now there's this, the new Renault Capture, which we've come to the southwest of France to drive for the very first time. But this isn't the only small French SUV. Peugeot has something to offer, and it's over to Luke to tell you all about it. I'm about 600 miles northwest of Tom in Alsace with a car that's about as close a competitor as you can get for the Renault Capture, the Peugeot 2008. Now, both cars are French, both are compact crossovers, both are front-wheel drive only, and both are just a little bit quirky. The 2008 is based on the 208 Super Mini, but as you can see, it's a little bit more rugged. It's got some plastic cladding, it's got a raised ride height, and it is about 200 millimeters longer as well. So that means that there's a bit more space in the cabin and in the boot. Inside is a classy and stylish interior borrowed from the 208, featuring plenty of satin chrome and gloss black. More expensive models get real premium looking features like a big touchscreen and some glowing blue dials. The outside looks just as upmarket with swept back headlights and a bold chrome grille. But is it a design eye catching enough to turn more heads than the Renault? Just like the 2008 is a stretch version of the 208, the Capture is a slightly stretched version of the new Clio. This car bears very similar hallmarks to the Clio as you'd expect with this oversized upright Renault badge at the front, this sweeping bar. To make sure the capture does look different from the Clio, it's got this new fog light surround, it looks quite cool. So the swept back headlights are quite similar to the Clio though, they look quite feline. The whole shape is quite curvaceous like a Coke bottle, in fact there's no right angles anywhere in the design. To make sure it does look like an SUV, there's plastic cladding around the wheel arches which looks quite cool, and that runs up the side as well. There's also 200 millimetres of ground clearance which puts it about 10 centimetres higher than a Clio on the road and bigger wheels to round off the look. Inside, the Capture isn't quite as posh as the 2008. The dash is made of some pretty hard plastics to cope with all that a young family can throw at it, but the design is spiced up with these body-coloured foils that run around the centre console and air vents. There's loads of storage too, including a dash top cubby hole. We're really sad that the Captures we get in the UK have a normal glove box instead of this excellent 11 litre filing cabinet drawer. So that's how it looks, but how does it drive? The Capture's definitely been built for comfort rather than speed. It's still quite fun to drive, but it's not exactly a memorable driving experience. The steering's quite light and devoid of feel. The pedals are very light. And to be fair, this five-speed gear change is actually very slick. This car has the 1.5-litre DCI diesel engine, and it's not the most powerful engine in the world, but it does return some pretty amazing economy figures. Renault claims 76 miles per gallon and 95 grams a kilometre of CO2. That comfort theme also extends to the ride. Well, it's a little bit fidgety over some smaller bumps, particularly because this car's got 17-inch wheels. It's nice and comfortable once you get onto the motorway. So Tom's impressed by the capture, but not necessarily blown away. How does the 2008 fare from behind the wheel? You know Peugeot's trick with the 208, where they gave it a really small steering wheel to kind of make it feel agile and sporty? Well, that's exactly what they've done in the 2008 as well, and it kind of has the same effect. Obviously not to the same extent because this is more of a high riding SUV model after all and all the kind of responses feel a little bit slower and there's a little bit more body roll but it's actually not too bad in the corners. And the ride is a little bit improved over the 208 as well. As far as engines are concerned, the most important ones are probably the diesels in particular, the 1.6 litre diesel we're driving here. So it's available with 113 brake horsepower or 91 brake horsepower. We're driving the more powerful one here. And it's really, really quite refined engine and performance is pretty good, 0 to 62 in 10.4 seconds. Got fuel economy of 70.6 miles per gallon and CO2 emissions are just 105 grams per kilometer. If you go for the lower power diesel and the automatic gearbox, then that goes down to 98 grams per kilometer. Prices for the 2008 start from 12995 and that's for the entry level access plus trim level and if you go for that you still get quite a fair amount of kit so you get manual air conditioning, you get electric windows and you get cruise control but it's probably worth moving up to one of the other higher up trim levels like Allure which kind of sits near the top and that gets you automatic aircon, it gets you these classy blue LED dial surrounds, it gets you a colour touchscreen, and also you get this 
laser etched LED pattern in the roof, which looks quite high tech. The 2008 is a far more practical car than the 208, featuring spacious rear seats that can be folded down to increase the size of the boot from 360 litres to 1,194 litres. But it hasn't exactly got as many clever touches as the Capture. So while it looks like an SUV, the Capture also mixes some of the traits of an MPV, and that extends to the boot. In this form, it has 377 litres of space and a nice rectangular opening that makes it easy to load. However, you can expand that in a number of ways. For a start, there's 85 litres of space underneath the boot floor. And the boot floor also flips over and it's got a hard plastic side on one side so you can store your muddy boots. The back seats also move forward and backwards by 160 millimetres and that gives you 455 litres of space when it's pushed forward. The seat backs also go down 60-40, giving you over 1,200 litres of boot space. The best seller in the UK is expected to be the Dynamic Nav, and that comes as standard with these zip-off seat cover faces that you can chuck in the washing machine when they get dirty. The capture's a pretty decent effort from Renault. It's not the most thrilling car to drive, but it's good to look at and it features loads of really sensible, practical features. The customisation options are nice to have too, and prices are competitive. So I think that the Capture just about has what it takes to beat the 2008. But what does Luke think? So, it looks like me and Tom are agreed on this one. The Renault Capture, because it's a little bit more fun to drive, it's just a bit quirkier, all in all it just feels a bit more fun. I think, in the battle of the French compact crossovers, Renault wins.